Today we are going to talk about functionalism which emerged in the early 20th century as a reaction to evolutional uh, diffusionist and historicist theories. Functionalism argues that every part of the society has a role to play in the society's survival. This theory stresses on the importance of interdependence among all behavior patterns and institutions within a social system. Functionalists uh, seek to describe the different parts of a society and their relationship by means of an organic analogy. The organic analogy compares the different parts of a society to the organs of a living organism. The organism is able to live, reproduce and function through the organized systems of its several parts and organs. Uh, like a biological organism, a uh, society is able to maintain its essential processes uh, through the way that the different parts interact. Functionalism is of the view that society consists of institutions that serve vital purposes for people. Instead of focusing on the origins and evolution of society, as the Eulenian theorists did, the British functionalists explored the relationship among different institutions and how these institutions function to serve the society or the individual. According to functionalists, institutions such as religion, kinship and the economy were the organs and individuals were the cells in this social organism. The question of whether these institutions serve the interests of the society at large or the interest of the individual person divided the school of functionalism into two camps each associated with a prominent figure in British anthropology. These two figures were Redcliffe Brown and Bronisa Malinowski. Malinowski talk about biocultural or psychological functionalism and uh, Redcliffe Brown talk about structural functionalism. According to Malinowski, individuals have physiological needs that is reproduction, food, shelter and uh, that social institutions exist to meet these needs. There are also cultural uh, drive needs and uh, four basic instrumental needs uh, which consist of economic, social control, education and political organization that require institutional devices. Each institution has a set of norms or rules, activities, material operators and a function. Melanowski says that it is crucial to consider the observable differences between norms and actions, between what people say and what they actually do. Melanowski's functionalism differed from that of Redcliffe Brown in that it focused on how society functions to serve the individual's interests or needs. This view is known as psychological functionalism. Melanowski did his major ethnographic study in the Tobrind Islands of a coast of Papua New Guinea. He tried to demonstrate how individuals use cultural norms to satisfy their certain needs. Melanowski's analysis of magic among the Tobrind Icelanders illustrates his psychological functionalism. He observed that when the Icelanders went fishing in enclosed lagoons where fishing was reliable and safe, they depended on their technical knowledge and skills alone. And when they went fishing on the open sea, however, which was more dangerous and highly unpredictable, they employed extensive magical beliefs and techniques. Thus, Melanowski argued that the use of magic arises in situations in which humans have no control over circumstances, such as weather conditions. Magical techniques are used to reduce internal anxieties and tensions for these individuals. In addition to magic, the trope riders have an elaborative system of beliefs concerning death, the afterlife, sickness and health as well. These beliefs aid in serving the needs of individuals as they adapt to the circumstances and exigencies of life. In other words, the individual has needs both 
physiological and psychological and cultural institutions customs and traditions exist to satisfy them the type of functionalism associated with red cliff brown is sometimes referred to as structural functionalism red cliff brown had done research in africa on the andaman islands in southeastern asia he focused on structure of society as reflected in the differing institutions that function to uh, perpetuate the survival of society he argued that a society's economic social political and religious institutions serve to integrate the society as a whole for example he studied the social institution that function to enhance uh, group solidarity in small scale society in some of his studies he emphasized how males had to marry outside their particular group into another group once uh, the male marries he establishes an important relationship with his wife's kin because he is an outsider he has to show extreme respect to his new in-laws uh, so that he does not produce hostility the male may also establish a joking relationship with them where by hostility is reduced by playful teasing red cliff brown suggested that all norms for specific behaviors and obligations among different people in kinship relationship uh, promote order and stability thus for him these social institutions serve society's need he suggested that the society is a system of relationship maintaining itself through cybernetic feedback while uh, institutions are orderly sets of relationship whose function is to maintain the society as a system brown inspired by august comte stated that the social constituted a separate level of reality distinct from those of biological forms and inorganic matter Brown argued that explanations of social phenomena had to be constructed within the social level. Thus, individuals were replaceable, transient occupants of social. Unlike Melanoski's emphasis on individuals, Radcliffe Brown considered individuals irrelevant. Now we are going to talk about some limitations of functionalism as well. Like the other early developments in anthropology, functionalism has its theoretical weaknesses as well. It fails to explain why societies are different or similar. Why do some societies have different types of institutions such as the extended family when similar ones such as the nuclear family might be able to fill the same function? This weakness arose from the tendency of functionalists to ignore historical processes. Uh, they were not concerned with the historical developments of differing institutions but rather focused exclusively on how these institutions serve uh, society and the individual. They could not explain for example why British societies experienced rapid technological change whereas other societies did not. when all of these societies had similar needs functionalists were also unable to explain social and cultural change very well because they tended to view societies as static and unchanging uh, they could not explain why if all institutions perform a particular function uh, these institutions would need to change functionalism as a school of thought has influenced a great deal of research in anthropology by focusing on the details specific functions of institutions within existing societies it encouraged the collection of valuable ethnographic data as with boss in us anthropology and redcliffe brown and melanoski moved their field beyond uh, the speculative theories of armchair anthropologists So this is all about functionalism if you have any question regarding it you can comment in the section below if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel